So if you've been living under a rock, you'll notice that today the news came out that the Rookie of the Month was selected and LaMelo Ball and Tyrese Halliburton were the two recipients for it. As you know, LaMelo in the East, he got the Eastern Award and Tyrese got the Western Award. Now I'm going to start with Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, Halliburton is very underrated, even though we see his talent has extremely high IQ. He makes the Kings better than what they already are. He helps Dan Fox out, becoming a key cog on their offensive scheme and defense. He has been very clutch this year, making all the right moves on the court and gives it his all. Every time Halliburton comes in to the rotation off the bench, he makes an impact. And players like Tyrese Halliburton play a long time in this league called the NBA. So I'm going to give the brother his flowers. As for LaMelo Ball, LaMelo Ball has been coming off the bench as well. Now, he didn't start many games like Halliburton. I, I think Halliburton started a couple of games. Uh, last night was LaMelo's first start. Did solid. If you take away his first quarter, you would have said that LaMelo did well. Uh, when he got in foul trouble, he was trying to play safe. You know how that is. But he still averaged uh, 14, 7, and 5 against the Miami Heat. But if that's what you're going to see from LaMelo at his worst, then, man, look out for him when he's at his best. I'm so glad to talk about this. You just don't know. Um, this channel has been constructively criticized for even saying that the 2020 draft class was better than what people thought they were. And so far, I've been right. And not just LaMelo and Tyrese Halliburton, but look at Tyrese Maxey for the uh, Philadelphia 76ers. What about Emmanuel Quickly of the Knicks? He's putting up buckets, and he reminds me of Lou Williams. Uh, Anthony Edwards, when he's on, he can score. Precious Achua, he's doing a good job for the Miami Heat. Uh, Bain from the Memphis Grizzlies is shooting 46% from three. I think he has the highest percentage from three in the NBA right now. I know he has it for the rookies. And uh, many players, not just them. Uh, Pritchard from the Celtics, he looks like a good one. So this draft class is proving a lot of people wrong. I'm sure... Uh, this crop of rookies have been tired of hearing the narrative that they're not a good draft class. And I really believe that that fake news came out because media scouts, let's be honest, they didn't really like the ball family. And LaMelo was a top three pick. Once they saw LaMelo a top three pick, I think their guess was, oh, it's not a good class. If LaMelo's a top three pick, then it's not a good class. And they were going with that narrative. But I've been consistent this whole time. I said, do not underestimate these rookies. Don't do it. Don't do it at all. But they did, and you see what happened. Isaac Okoro. Now, he's not a scorer, but he's getting minutes, and he's starting at times. Uh, I think he's starting the whole season. And he's proven so far to be a really talented defender. Uh, Big O, I think Big O will contribute in some way, but they got too many bigs at uh, Atlanta. But he's another player that you won't see blossom until there, there are trades that are made uh, for him to start. But I'm, I'm putting out all the names, and you're seeing, wow, this was not a bad class at all. I remember that certain phony scouts dissed the 2020 class so bad 
that they compared it to 2013. Now, I remember the 2013 draft class. And I said nothing will ever top that as the worst. And I'm right so far. But this is why new media is so important. We got to get rid of this, uh, what you call a sensationalism type of reporting, overreacting, over exaggerating. When you seen folks saying the 2020 draft class sucks, it's going to be as bad as the 2013 draft class. That's sensationalism. They're trying to get clicks and they're trying to uh, sound important. But most of these busters, they haven't played a game of basketball in their life. But since they're in the analytics department, uh, they think they know everything. That's the problem. Back to LaMelo Ball. For him to be the Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month and just calling him Rookie of the Month is impressive. You're talking about a rookie that barely gets involved. Yeah, he may get a couple of touches, but is the coach really creating plays for him? No. Most of his points comes from freestyling, pretty much. Making something out of nothing. That's really impressive to me. Can you imagine if LaMelo would average um, 35 minutes a game? Can you imagine the points, assists, and rebounds he'll have? It'll be a lot. Uh, One of my brothers on Twitter messaged me and they said that analytic wise if LaMelo played 35 minutes a game with a suitable usage rate look just a normal one a normal starter usage rate for a starting point guard he would average 18 9 and 8 and I believe it if LaMelo's averaging 12 and a half points 6 assists 6 rebounds in limited minutes just think what he'll average or more so let's see what happens I'm so excited for these two players Um, if you're a Kings fan you should be happy with Halliburton he's definitely going to be a factor for that franchise especially if they want to grow from being a lethargic franchise to uh, a team that is respected And as for Hornets fans, you should be excited as well. You should want LaMelo to represent the franchise. You should want the organization to also build around LaMelo Ball. So hopefully both things can come to fruition. This is a good time for basketball, especially for the veterans who are playing like LeBron and Kawhi. KD and then the rookies this has been a fun year despite the pandemic and as a fan of basketball I'm so happy to see it shout out to everyone who supports new media shout out to the new media gang we family y'all know what it is peace